In the past, I was a pretty broken person. Just to name a few of the challenges I had, I had really low self-esteem, anxiety and depression, and some problematic addictions as well. All parts of my OCPD. And things just got worse and worse for me until I lost my will to live. But one day, everything changed. And since then, I've just been going up. In this video, I'm gonna talk about my most life-changing day. Hey you guys, this is part four of my video series on identity and worth. If you want to fully understand how this day could impact my life in such a big way, you've got to see the first video in this series where I talk about my struggle growing up with low self-esteem. So if you haven't seen that yet, make sure you go check that out. And if you find these topics around faith and mental health interesting, don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Now first, I just want to start off by saying that this is not me trying to present proof of the existence of God. I'm just sharing what happened in my life that turned my unbelief into belief and my hopelessness into hope. So if you're keen on knowing how it all happened, uh, let's continue on from where I left off. So previously, all my energy went into trying to create my own worth. And as most people do, I looked outward to see if I can find and attach things to myself that I believed might increase my value as a person. Well, no matter how much I did that, I could never feel enough. In fact, I felt worse and worse until I felt completely worthless. So I finally came to a point where I was like, this is senseless to keep doing this. So when I was 26 years old, I left everything I had back in Korea, returned back home in Canada with nothing, and decided to stop doing more in order to be enough. That was huge for me. It freed me up to discover other ways to reach a sense of being enough. But you have to understand that for most of my life, uh, I had been doing it this one way. So to all of a sudden drop this one thing that I was familiar with, I was left pretty lost. So initially, my anxiety got really bad and I fell into depression. And it didn't help that I didn't have anything to go to, like a job. All I had was seeing my psychiatrist once a week. So I just ended up spending the rest of my time in bed just sleeping my life away. As a way to help me get back up and reintegrate it into society, my parents paid for me to take a film production program. Not to take it so seriously, but to just have fun with it. They also encouraged me to check out a church. I wasn't doing anything with my time, so I decided to be open to both. So I go check out this church close by to our house. At the end of service, one of the regulars comes and says to me, Hey, you're new here, right? Why don't you let our church's prayer team pray for you? I was like, uh, alright, sure. And so I approach one of the pairs of the prayer team. Now, they don't know me. They don't know what I'm going through. But they start by saying a little something like this. I'm getting the sense that you've been in a really dark place for a while. And that there's been a lot of disappointment. God knows all that you've been through. And his heart has ached along with yours. He knows that you've had to let go of a lot of things. And that you feel lost. But God wants you to know that you're right where you're supposed to be. And he's going to lead you. I feel like God also wants you to know that he's so proud of you, that he's filled with delight when he looks at you. I can see you as a child, just running around, being a kid, and God's got this content look on his face while he's thinking, that's my boy. You've got his fingerprints all over you because God's crafted you beautifully in his own image. You are a masterpiece to him. Hearing those words, I couldn't hold back my tears. I cried uncontrollably, finally feeling understood and empathized with. How in the world was a stranger able to know exactly what I needed to hear? To me, it just seemed too perfect to be a coincidence or a good guess. It felt like it had to have come from a higher place. So I thought, this must be God. God is right here, speaking to me through this person that's praying for me. With that thought, my whole posture inside of me changed instantly. Though physically I was still standing, inside, I felt like I was laying on the ground with my face down in humility. I believed I was about to hear the most important words of my life. I felt ready to let whatever God had to say to me to take authority in my life. 
And it was at that moment that the person praying for me was telling me that God is so proud of me. Those words cut through all the negative garbage that I believed about myself. So many curses that had been spoken over me, I could feel them coming undone. I could feel so many of my deep emotional wounds healing all at once. Wounds from my early childhood. Wounds I had gotten used to. Wounds I didn't even know existed. And while all of that was happening, I felt like a lifetime of uncried tears were just flooding out from me. And for the first time in my life, my mind opened up to the idea that I am enough. Not because of what I've done, but because of whose I am. That I have incredible intrinsic worth just for being a child of the Most High. That personal realization I had was so powerful for me, and it changed the course of my life. There's a scene from the movie Blood Diamond that always reminds me of that life-changing day. In the movie, a family gets separated by all the political unrest happening in Sierra Leone. In their separation, the father is put to work by a warlord, and the son becomes a child soldier. As a child soldier, the son is taught to channel all of his pain into violence and drugs. He lives a life so far outside of his character, that he loses himself. He forgets who he is and where he comes from. But the father never stops to get his son back because he just loves him too much. One day, the father comes face to face with his son, but the son doesn't even recognize his own father because of how brainwashed he is. The father then lovingly reminds his son who he is. You are a good boy. You love soccer and school. Your mother loves you so much. She waits by the fire making plantains. A red palm oil stew with your sister made. I know they made you do bad things, but you're not a bad boy. I am your father, who loves you. And you will come home with me and be my son again. I feel like this story applies to all of us. You see, we all have our pain points and areas of emptiness. We then do all kinds of things to try to control them. But what if, just like the story, our pain points and areas of emptiness exist in the first place because of a vital relationship that we've been separated from? What if, just like the story, we have a father who loves us so much that he puts our lives ahead of his own and he never gives up on us? But because of our limited awareness and all the things that we've been made to believe, we think he's not around. And what if, just like the story, even though the father has done everything he has to do to bridge the gap between us, we're unable to recognize him. Well, that right there is the gospel we Christians believe in. The good news that the enemy has been defeated through the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. That our Heavenly Father is with us. And that we can be and do so much more because of all of that. And that's exactly the turn that my life took after that day that I decided to go with God rather than continue on my own way. In so many ways, I'm in a much better place than I was before. Thanks for watching, you guys. Do you have a significant moment in your life where everything started to change for the better? We'd love to know your stories too, so let us know in the comments below. And don't forget to like and subscribe. See you next time. Bye.